form and structure. When I woke up this morning, it was a bit late, but I didn't care, so I just went ahead and prepared myself. Then I looked at the mirror, my eye was good, so I said to myself, my name is Dominic Gustavo. I currently consult um, in GPU computing and I work on the side on some research efforts that are my hobbies and my interests. And one of those research efforts is biophysical morphogenesis. So that's kind of a, a big word that I should break down, but perhaps I should give um, a bit of some history as to what this is and um, you know how, how I came to um, get interested in the subject. So I started my education in physics and mathematics and I decided to get an advanced degree in physics and we were studying uh, computational models of the universe, gravitational models of the universe. Um, I largely focused on black holes in graduate school mm -hmm. and different uh, substrates collapsing into black holes. So typically stars collapse into black holes holes, but also fields can collapse into black holes. And uh, that's that's largely what I what I studied in graduate school. I, in some sense, I became frustrated that we had these amazing dynamical models for the time evolution of the universe that were very accurate. And you, know, you could take a, a set of dynamical equation and time evolve them on a, on a computer and actually see the consequences of your dynamical model. And as I started working with these, I became frustrated in some sense that we have these amazing theories for the time evolution of the universe, but we don't have such good theories for the time evolution of biological systems. Like, for example, the development of an embryo, the growth of, a, of an organism, whether that might be a tree, lion, or a human being. We just don't have a dynamical theory for this. The individuals who study this are typically uh, developmental biologists who use biological scientific methods. They investigate uh, developing embryos, they classify phenomena, they name phenomena, and they can tell you what happens in each developmental stage of an embryo. But I can't exactly predict what happens for you know, new biological conditions. It's all looking, classifying, and studying what exists, but there just isn't any predictive power in their methods. Most of the predictive power in science comes from theoretical physics. It comes from taking some system, taking the initial conditions of some system, and then using dynamical equations to evolve to, to evolve that system and find out what happens in the future. And this is what physicists use. This is what engineers use to design physical systems, like um, helicopter blades, for example, or new materials that behave in a certain way, both thermodynamically and mechanically. And so the problem of embryogenesis is a problem of complexity. And we don't understand complexity all that well. We don't have theory that a robust theory for complex systems. Um, the closest theory that comes to it is the theory of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is what studies systems that are composed of many particles. And if you take some solid or some gas, you can well understand that material as far as, insofar as the way in which the material tends towards disorder, and that's called entropy. But you can't really understand very robustly mechanisms that tend towards order beyond phase transitions, beyond you know, systems transition from, say, a gas to a solid, for example, or a liquid to a solid. Um, but complex systems such as biology, we just don't have robust methods for that. And so that brought me to try and investigate whether or not, to what extent have people tried to develop any kind of theory whatsoever of growing organisms, developing embryos. Because if, if such a theory existed, we would have tools to, I mean, as far as the big picture is concerned, you know, what, what would come out of all of this? What would come out of a theory of embryogenesis? And... As far as the big picture is concerned, such a theory would help us um, solve problems such as biological aging, cancer, organism development, uh, among others. And so this is really a master problem upon which many other problems are posed. And of course, even maybe the big problem today is artificial intelligence. How do we get systems that are highly intelligent? And one answer to that is to try and simulate evolution to evolve a brain. And a very good computer scientist by the name 
named Scott Aronson at MIT, I believe, if I remember correctly, estimated that it, it would take thousands of years for us to, by the mechanism of evolution, develop something like a human intelligence, something like a, a brain that's of human intelligence. And I suppose my objection would be is that it doesn't take thousands of years to grow a brain. It takes nine months to grow a brain. And so if we study the mechanism of embryological growth, we can then generalize that and use that to not only solve problems of our own biology, but also to solve problems in artificial intelligence. How do you grow highly intelligent systems? And so I foresee what will come out of a research effort like this, if it is successful, is to um, develop self-organizing software that can literally grow from a software perspective, a intelligent systems. It's like a new kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah, it's taking the most sophisticated process that we know of, and that's growing biological organisms, and yeah. understanding that process to not only control our own biological evolution, control our own aging, control cancer, control and develop brand new organisms, properly understanding the way that biological start state information relates to what ultimately grows out of that information. And so in some sense, it's a question of information, it's a question of complexity. There are various approaches to this problem, of course, and some people are taking highly computational approaches. Um, Michael Levin at Tufts doesn't, you know, studies the time evolution of, of biological organisms. He doesn't really take a, a um, physics point of view. He takes a computer science point of view. He sort of asks, can we design a compiler that can kind of compile an organism down to the bytecode necessary to sort of reprogram biology into whatever we want to program it into. So he takes more of a, a, a computer science point of view. And I come from physics, so I take more of a physics point of view. Interestingly, the question is, does such a theory already exist? And you would imagine that if such a theory already exist, existed, you would have heard of it. And actually, the beginnings of such a theory, a, a, a sort of outline of a program was written by a fields medalist mathematician. So the fields medal is the highest honor in mathematics. It's like the equivalent of the Nobel, Nobel Prize in mathematics. And it's really only given to exceptionally talented people. And one such individual who won that medal was Rene Tom. And he wrote a book in French uh, in 1973, and then that was translated to English in 1975. And the book is called Structural Stability and Morphogenesis. And very few people that I've come across, at least you know, from my own, my own social networking, um, have heard of this book. In, in in professional networks that I'm that I'm a part of. Very few individuals I find have, have heard of this book. And it's a very rich piece of mathematics that attempts to reconstruct the dynamic. Dynamic meaning the, the time evolution. So what, what what are the equations? What is the dynamic, for example, that governs a particle as it falls? What is the dynamic what are the equations of motion that govern a fluid as it transitions into turbulence, for example, or the dynamic of an elastic solid, for example, etc. So what is the, it's a book that attempts to reconstruct local, the local dynamic of a developed embryo. And it's a very rich piece of mathematics that essentially takes a different point of view than your typical point of view or your typical methods in physics. In physics, we have time evolution equations, which tell you how a single element of a system will evolve. And then we want to look at a great many number of, or when we want to look at a system that is composed of a great many number of constituents, we tend to look at that statistically. So we, ch we look at the tools of statistical mechanics, and that allows us to look at gases and solids and systems that are composed of a great many number of particles. Due to certain intractable complexities of systems that are composed of a great many number of particles, you know, a typical solid is composed of 10 to the 25 particles. That means that you need on the order of 10 to the 25 equations of motion to describe it. Some of these equations of motion may be chaotic, so you can't specify the initial conditions. There's also you know, the three-body problem in physics. You can't really solve an inverse square problem for more than uh, two, two bodies or more than three bodies. So there are a lot of intractable difficulties that arise when solving a great many number of complex systems, systems with a great many number of particles. So Tom's approach is different. Tom's approach says, let's try and reconstruct locally what happens at every morphogenetic event. So when an embryo develops, for example, the first developmental stage, it, the, the fertilized cell begins to um, uh, duplicate and essentially forms a ball. And then that ball of cells, um, the first developmental stage is called gastrulation, where the digestive system forms. So it kind of folds into itself and it forms a tube, and that tube um, eventually becomes the digestive system in, in the development of an embryo, in, uh, in mammalian development, and also in, in insect development. Um, it is said that the most important moment of your life is when you gastrulate, when you develop your own digestive system. 
So that is the first morphogenetic event in a whole list of events that need to take place in order to develop you and your own body and your own biology. What's interesting is that Tom's approach is to, to try and analyze each of these individual morphogenetic events locally. And it turns out, he, he says that his approach is also ultimately inspired by an ancient Greek philosopher, Heraclitus, and D.R.C. Thompson wrote a book, Biological Forms, and he claims to ultimately be taking these ideas and casting them into a geometric language. And so, uh, Coming back to the central idea, every morphogenetic event, every change in form of a developing system depends only on the number of dimensions of the ambient space and the topology, the connectedness of the ambient space that we're in. So ultimately, you can write down or classify all of what are called um, the bifurcation catastrophes, or I'll just use the word catastrophes, and we will equate a what is called a catastrophe in the theory of, in catastrophe theory in, um, in dynamical systems with a morphogenetic event. So these catastrophes kind of classify all the possible changes of form that a system can take place. So if a system changes in form, if it's dynamic changes, so as the system can change in form locally, it must have undergone a catastrophe. Catastrophe, of course, is, is technically speaking what's called a mathematical bifurcation in a dynamical system. It changes the equations of, of motion in a, a specific way. And all the morphogenetic events can come down to these catastrophes. And so that is ultimately Tom's program, to try and locally reconstruct the dynamic of, developing, of a developing embryo with these catastrophes. And so that is ultimately Tom's program. This is so interesting. <laughs> Really interesting, yeah. The interesting part, you know, among other things, is that not very many people are actually aware of, uh, of this research that is actually taking place. And it seems as though the research was, you know, published in the 70s, and then it kind of fell out of interest in some sense. Uh, people just didn't really pick it up. I kind of suspect that the mathematicians found it too biological, and the bio mm -hmm. biologists found it too mathematical. It kind of just wasn't picked up by any research commun communities that I'm aware of. And but the work exists, and it can be uh, carried on in a way that Rene Tom ultimately describes in, in his book, Structural Stability and Morphogenesis. Uh, I have been compelled in the last few years to try and carry on this research in sort of my own way, to present it to the scientific community. And I've actually started a research group of my own um, that writes software, um, open source software. And ultimately, our intention is to get a lot of people together who are interested in this program, probably mostly college students with free time who want to work on a project, and get people to, to develop a software package, an open source software package, that does exactly what Renee Tom uh, describes for developing the local dynamic of developing. Um, is it like a kind of a biophysics field? Exactly, yeah. So it really is a, a, a biophysical theory. We're trying to do physics locally for sufficiently small distances and times, focusing on the, the changes in form, the morphogenetic events of a developing embryo. But the idea that if you can describe these locally, then ultimately you can put these pictures together to form a global model of a living being, of a mm -hmm. bioorganism um, that will describe to you how the entire system and most importantly, the most importantly, as far as artificial intelligence is concerned, the nervous system as well. The problem that has been fundamentally neglected as far as research is concerned on, you know, the, the big questions. You know, we, we have a lot of very successful research in physics on things that um, are fascinating. This is a fundamental problem that would immediately translate into public value. And uh, I think that, that this is the problem that, that ultimately has the most value for humanity. Are you hoping that one day they will be aware on this? I'm, I'm hoping to introduce a new generation of scientists to this work yes. that not very many people know of. And I'm hoping that people start getting interested in the work. I'm hoping that people choose to start investigating this. And mm -hmm. ultimately, um, I suspect in the future, there will emerge a market for organism engineering. And if there's a market for organism engineering, then you can start a company around it start a business model and you can create a company, a research company that can actually provide services in um, regenerative medicine, in cancer biology, in organism engineering, in the control of aging. Ultimately, with you know the biotech market being where it is, we, you know, we kind of expect in the future that, that ultimately a market will emerge for these tools but it hasn't quite emerged just yet as far as I'm concerned. But that's my, that's my naive opinion. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I'm excited.
<laughs> oh, what is it? And thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> I love this. In front or no? Everything like this. So <laughs> really interesting. <laughs> no, no, no. Continue. It. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And also, thank you very much for 